Hi, welcome to another lesson at Edu Solutions Institute. Now, today we are looking at CSEC physics syllabus. And more specifically, we are going to recap what we learned last week as a means of using questions to apply the principle of the motion graphs. Now, stay tuned as we explore some questions that will involve the use of motion graphs to describe motion of objects either by a speed time graph or a distance time graph. Let's get into it. Now, question one here says that we have a figure 1.1 shows a graph of speed against time as a train travels from one station to the next. Now, if we notice here on our x-axis, we have time that is specified on our y-axis. We have the speed or the velocity in meters per second. Now, we're going to use this graph to calculate the distance between the train stations. Now, before we go into calculating the distance, let's just break this up into different sections. But it's always good to know what's happening to this object at different points. Now, the first section right here, we're going to call it the blue section, right? That stops at 10 seconds, right? So for the first 10 seconds, the blue section here represents that object was speeding up. Right? So it was accelerating. So it moved from zero speed to this line here, which is 18. So it moved from zero to 18 in 10 seconds. So it's speeding up. Right? Now, if we go to the next section, we're going to call the middle section the green section. Right? That stops at 130. So from 10 seconds to 130 seconds, it was moving at the same speed. So that is constant speed all right so it didn't change from being 80 and then for the final let's call it the red section which is the red section here which means that the speed now comes from 18 to zero so therefore it is slowing down which means it's decelerating and it's slowing down till it becomes to rest at zero meters per second in speed right at this point here. So now that we know what each line represents, let's go into our question. What's the distance? Now, from last week's lesson, we learned that the distance from a speed time graph is calculated by finding the area of the line. So because we want to know the total distance between 0 seconds and 150 seconds, we're going to find the area of the entire shape here. Now, we're going to do it the easy way, which we're going to split it up into different sections. So we're going to call it section 1, section 2, and section 3. So let's go. So section 1, we're going to call it a triangle. Okay? So for a triangle... We know to find the area, it's half base times the height. The base is 10, 10 seconds and the height was 80. So that gives us that it is 90 and it's a distance, so it's in meters. Right? Section 2, we had a rectangle in the middle there. And to find the area, it's length times width, which would be the length of 10 to 130, so that's 120, and the width is 18 going up. So that is 120 times 18, which gives us 2160. It's distance, so it's also meters. And then finally, section three is a triangle. And a triangle would mean it's half base times height. So it's half the base, which would be from 130 to 150, so that's 20, times the height of 80. 
So therefore, this becomes 180 meters. So therefore, the answer here now would be that the total distance would be the sum of these three sections. So it's 90 plus 2160 plus 180, which will give us a total of 2,430 meters. All right. So that's the total distance from both train stations. Now we go into what's the acceleration of the first 10 seconds. Now, again, if we want to find the acceleration, now this is where we find the gradient of our line. And the gradient of the first 10 seconds would be that it started at zero and ended at 80 and the y axis. So therefore we take 18, the top number as our y2 and the zero as our y1. And then 18 matches with 10 seconds. So that was, would be our x2 and the y10 matches with the x10 for your values of x and y's. So therefore, to find a gradient here, so the acceleration is your gradient, which would be in turn equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And y2 was 18, y1 was 0, x2 was 10, x1 is 0. So that is 18 over 10, which is 1.8, and the unit for acceleration is meters per second squared. All right. Let's go to question two. Now, in question one, notice that we did all three things as possible with a speed time graph. We described the motion. We found the descent, right, which is finding the area under the line. And we did the acceleration, which is finding the gradient of the line. All right. Now let's go into a distance time graph. So in this one, we have a distance time graph for a moving object. Describe the speed of the object between points A and B. So between point A and B, we notice that it's a curve. So it's not a straight diagonal line. It's a curved diagonal line, which indicates that this, it's changing distance, so that means the speed would be changing. Now we have to be specific. What type of speed change is happening? Is it increasing in speed or reducing in speed? So remember from last week, we said that once it's curving downwards, which is what it's doing now, then that means the speed is getting smaller. Right. So curving downwards on a distance time graph means that our speed is decreasing. So it starts with a faster speed, and then each time the speed gets slower and slower. All right. And then we look at our B to C. Now, B to C is a diagonal straight line. And diagonal straight line from last week represents that the speed is constant. Good. Now, let's look into the other question. Now, state whether the acceleration is zero, negative, or positive from our graph. So between A to B, right, we said that speed was decreasing. And if speed was decreasing, then that means we are slowing down. And slowing down, which would mean that it's decelerating, which means that it is a negative acceleration, All right? And then from B to C, where it's a constant speed, anything that moves at a constant speed is not accelerated. So hence, we have a zero acceleration there, All right? And it's zero because it's a straight line. So therefore, it tells us that speed throughout this journey is the same value. All right, and then final one for this question is what's the average speed for the 40 seconds? Now, from here, we would know that average speed 
because it's changing speeds throughout its journey, then our average speed would mean that what is the overall speed? Meaning, if it go up, down, constant, then there is a value where it was the main speed throughout the journey. And so our average speed would be your total distance traveled over the total time. Right? And all of this would be from our graph. Because we said distance time graph, the total distance traveled was 50 in a total time of 40. So this would be 50 divided by 40 would give us 1.25. And the unit force speed is meters per second. So this would be your average speed throughout the journey of this object. So when it's going up or going down or moving at constant speed, its average throughout the entire journey was 1.25. All right, let's go to our final questions, which will include just describing based on the shape of the objects. So this is what we did last week. So it should be an easier one to go through. So we're describing graphs A, B, and C to this using these specific terms given. So for graph A, graph A is a curve that curves upwards on a distance time graph. So on a distance time graph, curving upwards means that we're increasing in speed. So therefore, we notice there's an increase in speed here. So that would be the description for graph E. Graph B, graph B is a diagonal straight line. And diagonal straight line on a distance time graph indicates to us that it is a constant speed. So do we have constant speed here? Yes, we do. So B represents a constant speed. And then finally for C, C is a horizontal straight line on a distance time graph. And that tells us that the object is not moving from that distance. So in other words, it is at rest or it is stationary. All right. So notice once you understand the shape of a graph, then you will be able to describe its motion. All right. Now let's look at the second type of graph, which is a speed time graph. And we're going to describe graph D, E, and F using the terms given. So D, on a speed time graph, D is curving upwards. And an upward slope of a curve for a speed time graph tells us that the speed is increasing at an increasing rate. And increasing at an increasing rate tells us that it is increasing in acceleration. So the increasing rate is the acceleration part. So it is increasing in speed, but each time the speed increase is gets bigger and bigger each time. So that means the acceleration is increasing. All right. So graph E is a diagonal straight line, which means that it's no, it's having a speed, but this time the speed is a constant value. So each time it changes speed it is changing it at the same value per second. So if it changes its speed five meters per second every second, then that means that every second after that, it's going to add five meters per second to its speed. And then F is a horizontal straight line, which tells us that this node, the speed does not change from whatever value this is. So that tells us that we are having a constant speed. All right, so that's it, the end for us today. So I hope you understand a little bit more on motion graphs, because it's very simple how to describe motion and how to calculate information from our motion graphs. Now, before I go, please share this video, like it, subscribe if you haven't subscribed as yet, and also Give a comment based on what you have learned, any question that you have on the topic, and so I can assist and I can give you some guidance going forward. So that's it for us. 